kitty cats tearing up the couch. They got a little scratch post there, but they're treating the couch uh, as the scratch post. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. Today, today is March 7th, 2023. Hello, Plutonic Pluralist. In like Flynn. Uh, welcome to another live stream. Today, today, we are going to do mapping global conflicts part four and we're gonna after this one we're gonna take a pause for two or three months to see how things play out because we've mentioned that this is going to be an extremely important period in human history i am first plutonic polarist <laughs> would be the first time when, i don't think it would be the first time i think you've been the first few couple of times birdie here how are you doing what's up what's up uh, and I think we're going to step away from this for a couple of months, two, three months. It's an extremely important period in human history, really. Most important period in human history in my lifetime, since I, was a, since I was a twinkle in my daddy's eye. Really, this is the most important period uh, for more than half a century. Uh, and hopefully when we come back to this, there's going to be more blue. Uh, Elder God, instant notification. Awesome, awesome. That's great, Elder God. And welcome, welcome. Uh, so today, um, while we wait, actually, for notifications to go out and notifications to go on out instant for people to roll in, uh, my quick little intro, I am on Patreon, Substack, Subscribestar. You can follow the work there for those of you that are supporting this work on those platforms and as well as on Twitch and a handful of people that are supporting this work on sensor tube and the other means of support that we've been getting including um, board games being sent to us comic books being sent to us cryptos indeed of course of course and the love and the participation and just coming coming to our community and sharing information and uh, helping to spread the word uh, gang thank you for the support uh, uh, nice little space we've created informative without this wow sharing this information we would uh, there's a lot of info that i personally have learned from everyone sharing info with us in the comments on the video platforms and gilded before this uh when we we're on the other platform that went censored uh we wouldn't know as much as we do and we wouldn't be as prepared as for uh what has been happening and what is to come. So my appreciation gang. And um, we do announce these live streams 30 minutes, 45 minutes before we go live on Twitter, Minds, VK, Gab, Parler, and Getter. Uh, and you can follow the work there. Uh, we do have a SoundCloud page where we upload some of the podcasts, some of the live streams we do as podcasts and those podcasts are available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, whatever it is, and the other ones. Jay Powell, hello, Chicho and all. Hello, hello, salutations, salutations. Emersonic, good evening, Chicho and Sha. Good evening, Emersonic. Good evening, good evening. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, let me take these guys down. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Gilded. Doink, 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 and doink. As for snacks, I'm munching on pomegranate still, hardcore. Have had a few bowls. We put a big dent into into the big bowl I showed you guys a couple of days ago. So pomegranates and apples with a sprinkle of mint, uh, dried mint, and mix it all in. Uh, super good, super good. Really, like when you eat this, just the body feels so refreshed. It's crazy, like super hydrating i guess take a look at that take a look at that Ooh, that's delicious and the pomegranates have been amazing amazing continue dairy free <laughs> so, oh my god yeah they're amazing and the mint so nice I think there was someone on a comment on one of our pomegranate videos 
that they mentioned they sprinkled mint on top of pomegranates i've done it i've done it with apples before for sure but i never did it i don't think i did it with pomegranates until i read the comments so it kicks back into sharing information right like as you know i love my pomegranates but this has given it a amazing little twist of pomegranates with a little bit of sprinkle of mint so we're the wiser for sharing information so nice wow i got a little bit of cashews here it's cream egg season cream egg season I got a little bit of cashews that i'm not much now too what's a cream egg season oh that is easter coming up yeah 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 <laughs> i used to when i was a kid i used to eat that is that what we're talking about birdie here the thing the candy easter eggs yeah 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 but the cream easter egg is it uh, you know i'm not promoting this stuff i don't eat this stuff anymore but Cad cadbury's <coughs> a cream egg <coughs> ghost face you prefer mallow cups i don't know what mallow cups are that's the one that's the one birdie oh my god when i was a kid just uh getting those i used to get those <gasps> it's like stringing <laughs> crazy no, back then at least it was most likely sugar when i was a kid i'm pretty sure it's been corn syrup for a long time now thank god <laughs> It was most likely sugar when I was eating. No matter how good, it, it, how bad of sugar it was, it couldn't have been as bad as corn syrup. <laughs> I can't believe you brought that up. I haven't thought about those forever. Those things are crazy addictive, mm, especially for a 420 life. Uh, so I haven't eaten one of those for 20. Yeah, I haven't eaten one of those for, I don't know, long, I'm older than you though, so a long time, a long time. <laughs> That's via going crazy. Futarko is Maloka e Maloka is an ancestral long house log log house. I'm supposed to use log house. Log house used by indigenous people of the Amazon, notably in Colombia and Brazil. Ah oh, Rendell, salutations, salutations, welcome, welcome to our live stream has subscribed the tier one for 43 months 43 months stream <laughs> salute brother salute that's 43 months what is that that's uh how many times does 12 go into 43 right it goes three times that's 36 and then you got seven left over uh and then seven divided by 12 more than 50 percent. so over three and a half years very cool very that's as long as we've been live streaming basically right that would be a since we've been live streaming that's cool i was eating them in 1978 i was eating them all the way through the 80s <laughs> do they still sell them uh i i i misunderstood maloc i don't know what malocops are joe three and a half years three and a half years uh Jalana Paz, hello, 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 Chicho. I apologize for missing son. No worries. I'm currently grieving the loss of my brother. I hope all has been what? My brother. I hope all has been good for you all there. I'm not gonna be able to finish the stream. I have to leave for my mother. Oh, Jalen, what the? F oh, I'm sorry to hear that, brother. Uh, or sister, of course. You know, Jalan. I don't know. Uh, but John, um, uh, I got a video out there. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, hit me up if you if you if you need to talk or if you have any questions. If you need some support, if you need a sort of a because I've had to do two. Uh, devastating. Uh, <sighs> um, so I have a video out there. Here, hold on. Is 
it? Oh, that's Here we go. Uh, check out this video if you haven't seen it. Check out this video if you haven't seen it. Did I read your thing right? Hello, Chicho. I apologize for missing Sunday. I'm currently grieving the loss of my brother. Yeah. Uh, Jalen, uh, feel free to hit me up. Okay. Cardamom tea. No, not cardamom tea. Uh, dan, danan stay cooking. Dana stay cooking. Dana stay cooking. <laughs> Dana stay. This is a. Uh, um, it, uh, actually, no. This has cardamom. The, I, I read that as something else. This has. This is cardamom and Earl Grey blend of two different Persian teas that we end up getting. So we buy two different. Uh, blends one of them is cardamom one of them is earl gray or orange pico i can't remember which one i mixed this one with no it's not orange pico it doesn't have the orange pico taste it's earl gray earl gray and a little bit of cardamom i put more of the earl gray in here so it's really nice enzo how are you doing enzo smiles when do you think america's addiction to war will uh will ever end if ever it will end uh, unfortunately, we have to make sure it doesn't end uh, when it's, the empire is completely collapsed. Um, because do we really want to go there? Do, do, do we, you know, the empire should give up trying to become an empire, right? And we can see the empire here. This is one thing I actually, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to do. This is one thing I thought it would be a good idea to do. Let's go through for the last 40 years to find out how many countries in the world the United States has been involved in militarily specifically not we're not talking about CIA coups uh, financial terrorism sanctions anything we're talking about for the last 40 years let's say since 1980 since we're talking about Cadbury eggs right the cream eggs since 1980 so 42 years 43 years Let's see how many countries the United States has specifically bombed versus how many countries that Russia has bombed. And if you guys want, we could do a collective. How many countries Europe and the United States have bombed versus how many countries Russia and China have bombed, right? We could do this. Uh, if you guys want to do it, we can do it with big colors. That way it stands out. So. Not only are we getting a micro feel, country specific, what's going on, and we still have work to do. We have a macro feel, we're region wise, and specifically historical wise. So we're gonna look at it as a timeline, right? In the last 40 years, cumulative, I guess. Not, this is, this is a snapshot of today, present. It's a point right this is a point on a graph right this is why mathematics is ridiculously important right so if this is whatever the function is right if this is time usually you put time here on the x-axis if this is time this would be conflict right war let's say because as far as i'm concerned if any any government is bombing in the country countries bombing another country I don't care if it's a missile or whatnot that country has waged war on the other country right so timeline war and we're gonna switch it up different colors of USA versus Russia right if you want and we're gonna put we'll put what colors I got I got two big which colors do we want? Do we want to do this? Let me read this. Let me read this. What do the colors mean? Uh, Chum, the colors mean this. Blue is peace. Okay. Or not involved in war. So pretty calm. Yellow is civil war. Okay. Red is hot war. And orange is supporting war. Country. Either financially or militarily. 
I think more financially we've been saying it, right? Enzo, uh, Enzo, when do you think America? Oh, I read that, uh, Randall. Have to take care of something. Be right back. Hope everyone is doing well. You too, Randall. You too. Is that chocolate and whipped cream in a small cake? Mm, yeah, that sounds like a lovely combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super delicious, Dana. Super delicious. My sympathies. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, for from afar, Jalan. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, John, thank you friend your videos are the best and I think the US has been involved uh, involved all 40 years fucked up man yeah indeed I think they are called tumak tea cakes tumak tea cakes uh, Joe Chicho I don't know if you saw Russell Brown and Joe Rogan the other day but he made a good point that we can't have the military industrial complex making money from a war and the pharmaceutical companies making money from sickness and expect the world to to get better because they have an incentive for things that hurt humanity the business model has to change i agree and so can you send me that line to, to each other okay so let's do this gang uh, let's do i got four colors we're not going to do blue we're not going to do green we're going to do orange, orange and pink. Let's do orange and pink. So what we're going to do is this, right? Let's do this. So right now we're looking at a point in time. And if this is time, you know, for US, you could go oh, involved in two wars, involved in three wars, involved in one war. No war, no war, no war, no war, hopefully. And then more wars, more wars, more wars. And then we can do, you know, russia involved in how many wars over the last 40 years right versus this which is if we're doing on a timeline if you're doing this we're looking at a point in time that's it that's all we're doing so we're sort of applying calculus to mathematics right now and we're gonna extrapolate accumulative over the last 40 years so you could consider it i guess the area total of each of the bar graphs or we could use a different type of graph to present this right there's lots of uh, videos out there of um, you know you could see maps over time clicking you see empires growing and stuff those are super cool those are super cool um, are we doing non-war related issues yeah uh, a chump so civil war like for example Nigeria right nigeria there's mass riots right now why are there mass riots in nigeria because nigerian government came out and canceled a lot of currency and they want to take everything digital per dictates of the world economic forum in davos right and the technocrats in the united states and the fascists around the world right they want to take every all currency to, to be digital no cash right no cash that way they know every transaction, everything. They know how many papers you buy in your lifetime if this goes through, right? If you're gonna be paying more because you wipe your ass more, right? Maybe you don't eat enough fiber and you have shitty poops, right? Like, really? And then they look at your diet and say, oh, you're consuming too much paper, too much carbon. So you won't be allowed to buy meat, meat, right? because you need more fiber in your diet. That way your poops aren't as messy, so you consume less toilet paper. And you're going way too far to get your toilet paper. You can only buy your toilet paper at a store a kilometer away from you. That's the furthest you can go, right? Because you're consuming too much gasoline. And they don't care if the toilet paper that you have to buy within your one kilometer radius of your residence is twice as more expensive as the one you buy over there right or you like to shop locally which is 10 kilometers away instead of box stores which are a kilometer away so you're going to be forced to go to walmart to buy your toilet paper instead of locally grown hemp paper which is organic and good for the environment because you're driving 20 kilometers away right nigeria model for europe canada united states australia new zealand digital currency 
right? The carbon tax individual. That's a civil war. Peace means the countries aren't waging war on, are not waging war on their own citizens, and they are not actively supporting war in another nation, right? Seems a reasonable place, right? Red means red. It's an active war zone, right? Orange means they're actively supporting an active war zone, right? May it most most likely militarily training uh, and a lot of finances, right? A lot of finances. Like for example, Canada announced last month that they're going to be uh, donating four hundred five million dollars to buy weapon systems from a U.S. weapons manufacturer to send to Ukraine. Otherwise, known as money laundering through Wall Street, but the cost to humanity is death and destruction, right? That's orange. That's actively supporting a war. Okay, actively supporting war. That's the legend for our map that we've been doing. And right now, what we want to do is bring out these two colors and put them big because they have big effects. It'll stand out as a macro because it's a micro. And we'll get a feel for how many countries Russia has been involved in, wars Russia has been involved in in the last 40 years versus how many countries the United States has been involved in. I'm just gonna get back to the chat um, because I read stuff and then I go on a rant and I miss chat. Uh, Awesome, Elder God. You got a <laughs> legend. Elder God, peace, civil war, uh, supporting war, active war. Awesome. Are you doing a non-war related issues? Well, peace would be non-war related. Uh, Chum, but I'm not sure what you mean non-war related. Like trying to bring peace? China just put something on the table to try to bring peace, which is not going to go through, right? NATO will not accept it. Neither will Russia, Russia right? Uh, Pluton, may, maybe we can, uh, we can't, we can talk about uh, some other countries. Uh, somewhat. Yeah, I'd like to put more blue on here, to tell you the truth. Like Elder God mentioned. What about stuff like Nar Nararu? I don't know what Nararu is. What's a Nararu? Is it a country? Thank you very much for uh, follow, Sarah. Uh, Shroom Tripper, how are you doing? Who really started the war? Uh, U.S. or Russia? It wasn't a country that started a war. It were uh, these were institutions that started the war. The peoples of countries did not, right? All of the United States did not start the war. Only a certain sect in the United States that wanted war took over the United States media, the government, and pushed for this war and started the war, right? And it's multiple administrations. Right? I always tell people that. They are idiots for not using cash and going uh, electronic. Indeed, uh, Shroom Chipper, 100%. <laughs> Plutonic Rose as well. What's a Nararu? Uh, Enzo, watch John Mishimer. John Mishimer country. No cash, no choices, no chance. Yeah. Budling Pimp. Budling Pimp. Salutations, welcome to our chat all about control and we are allowing them to do so yeah yeah well people in nigeria are protesting right they're protesting phosphorus mining so nararu phosphorus mining where's nararu nabushka how are you doing yeah so many idiots and hypocrites in the world unfortunately the same people who think using a smartphone can't be avoided <laughs> or isn't that bad yeah it is what it is right da, 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 da. Uh, pluton opponents in my country before covid politics um, a large majority of people were for the for the keeping uh, of cash as primary payment now it is about half or less that still support cash uh, as necessary yeah it in canada when they rolled out this whole thing there were places weren't accepting cash i go in there to buy something they go no no cash because they said cash dirty spreads the tea uh as uh, uh sweden for sanity says right i was like dude this is government denomination you have to take it 
they wouldn't take it. So I had to leave some places without paying, buying what I wanted to buy. Right? People are, are sometimes very low IQ. Uh, shoot tripper. Do you think Russia made a good decision going into Ukraine or should they have just let the US have it? Uh, let's go through this. Let's go through this. Let's go through this. We'll get a good picture. Uh, Shroom tripper. Yes, partly actively and partly used. Da, 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 Joe. Uh, Cheryl, how are you doing? Cheryl. Pomegranates, apple with mint. Uh, dried mint sprinkled on top. Super delicious. Super del I've been we went crazy on pomegranates. I bought a whole ton and pounded it all out in a big bowl. So refreshing. Joe Chicho. We have however, haven't done the eight most popular country in the world. The eighth most populous country in the world. It's not Indonesia. Indonesia is huge. Indonesia is like 300 plus million, isn't it? Which one's the eighth most populous country in the world? Mm, which one would it be that we haven't done? Eighth most populous country in the world. Is it Indonesia? Which one's the eighth most populous country in the world? Bang uh, Bangladesh? That's the eighth most country. Bangladesh is the eighth most country, popular country in the world. Wait a second. Okay, so we've got Indonesia. Where's Bangladesh? Philippines, Indonesia. Okay, you guys have to direct me to Bangladesh. Where's Bangladesh? North north east of india north east nepal wow i can't believe i can't find india north east Tajikistan. I'm going way, I'm going too far. Bangladesh is right next door to India. Where is it? We've done Nepal. Myanmar. Okay, I gotta look. I gotta look straight on it. I'm going to look on the map. <laughs> Formerly known as East Pakistan. Oh, so you want Northwest, not Northeast. Covering it up. I think I'm covering it up. That's Nepal. What's this one? Oh, this is a uh, Bhutan. I gotta, I gotta look it up. I gotta look it up. What's going on? Oh no, it is northeast. So this is Bangladesh here. So what's Myanmar? Wait a second. So it's right there. How come it doesn't say it? Oh, there it is right there. God damn. It was right there and I couldn't see it. Too many numbers. Too many numbers. My bad. That's the eighth most populated country in the world, Bangladesh. It borders Bhutan, okay. 
Yeah, right. I don't know why they wrote it so small. The ho the the hookah? It's his capital. The hookah is his capital? I bought this thing 20, for, uh, over 20 years ago. Right? Bay of Bengal. Center north. So that's where it is. Yeah. The whole area has a crazy high power. Eighth one, one country in the world. Wow. Wow. That's why there's a whole water war thing going on there. 169 million... Almost 170 million people in Bangladesh. Whoa. Whoa. The hookah. The hookah. Is that how you pronounce it? The, the haka. The haka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the capital. Canada, just to give you a comparison, Canada has 38 million people. The second landmass in the world, Canada, largest country in the world, Canada. The second largest country in the world, 38 million people, let's say 40 million people. 170 million people. Wow. Gamer. Uh, the greatest trick the devil ever uh, pulled was convincing people uh, to be mad at everything other than the corporations and billionaires fleecing them on a daily basis. Uh, government too right what was that saying uh when government uh fears the citizens that's a democracy when citizens fear the government that's a dictatorship totalitarianism fascism uh, right joe chicho bangladesh is the most densely populated country in the world is it i thought the west bank was i, th I thought the west bank was the most densely populated region in the world because the West Bank, West Bank, as far as country goes, Palestine is recognized as country. So, sorry, not West Bank, Gaza Strip. So Gaza Strip and the West Bank. So Gaza Strip, as far as I know, is the most densely populated region of the world. And Gaza Strip and the West Bank are considered to be a country, Palestine. So I don't know if that would, because a lot of that uh, might not be, uh, Palestine might not be occupied. Well, there's a lot of settlements there, so they don't even count that if you don't include uh city states like uh, monaco okay calf med fika how and only half the size of sweden wow and only half the size of sweden wow joe bucky what do the dots represent blue peace yellow civil war red hot war zone orange supporting a hot war zone calf gafoni chicho this is off topic but how do you feel about anti-natalism i don't know what anti-natalism is plutonic plurus uh bangladesh is set, set to be a fertile land but is plagued by floods regularly i heard dana copied from elder god awesome dana thank you very much so gang should we do this should we uh before oh yeah so what, what while we're here what should we say bangladesh is it peaceful there is it's not involved in a war is it a civil war so what's what's the so we better do something about it is it peace is it civil war because i don't know obviously i don't know anything about bangladesh i knew the name uh, i didn't know anything else where's my scissors What's going on in ba uh, Bangladesh? What's going on in Bangladesh? Are we peace? It can't be actively supporting war. I would have known that. It could be a civil war. Uh, by the way, gang, apologies about construction noise. They're building a house there. So we're going to hear it. Am I a pacifist? If someone's attacking me, I will defend myself. Yeah. Uh, Plutonic Plurus, a lot of... Is the most violence I heard in Bangladesh, but don't know exactly. SQ, salutations, salutations. Xavier, hey man, it's uh, Cosmic Visions, Cosmic Visions, how are you doing? Just gonna enjoy the stream. Awesome, awesome, lurk away. I do that with a lot of uh, live streams I listen to. Aldega Chicho, I have friends in Bangladesh. I will get some data. Okay, get some data. Like, 
I don't know anything. Um, if there's unrest there or not. If there isn't, I think it's coming at some point. Uh, at some point, <laughs> at some point, because of um, water, uh, topsoil, food, uh, resources, right? Check out the concert for Bangladesh, August 1st, 1971. Wow, wow I don't know about anything about this. Uh, John, one of my friends has, has, uh, and I love Bangladesh shirt, does he? <laughs> he might know. Is he there? Ask him what's going on. Bird here. I don't think they have clean water there. No, water, water issue, this whole region is huge, which is crazy because extremely mountainous. You should, you should be able to have clean water, but it's, it, or access to water, but this borders, conflicts, uh, right? Uh, Chum, that's what I know about it. That's what I know. The guy with the t-shirt, <laughs> call him. <laughs> Not since 1970 uprising, I guess. So peace. Uh, bud, bud, light pimp. Is it true there? Uh, there's uh, just one inch of topsoil left. Well, if you maybe if you put it across the whole world, uh, but topsoil is very concentrated in certain regions. Certain regions don't have any topsoil, and it's being depleted, hardcore, hardcore like topsoil problem is huge 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 right huge uh, so i mean ukraine used to be the bread basket of the world right and you could grow enough uh wheat there to feed the world not anymore right now right His dad taught some Bangladesh immigrants and they gave it to him. Cool, cool. Enzo, man, I'm ready for your presentation here about US versus Russia. Yeah, let's go through. We're, we're gonna need help. We're gonna need help. Okay. Uh, because there's gonna be stuff that has happened that I've either forgotten or don't know about, right? Calf met Vika. What is the stuff about topsoil? Are we running out? Can we make more? Uh, making more topsoil becomes, it takes time to make topsoil. That's why a lot of cities now in the West are collecting compost and making any worms you, you got to give it time right uh, but that's controlled topsoil it, it loses out in nature that's why fertilizer has been ridiculously important uh, for growing food right plutonic polar is nice i like the series mind your language joe chicho i don't think Bangladesh is involved in any wars currently i don't think so either but is it is it a peaceful place you know what let's put peaceful there because I haven't heard anything. No one's coming up with anything. So let's assume it's a safe place to go. And there's no active civil war going on. So no active civil war. So let's put Bangladesh there. Boink. Because it seems to be the trend in this region. At least for now. Right. Orange means actively supporting war. All right so most of the european union countries nato countries for sure when european union countries as well have been supporting the war in ukraine right orange is supporting war party supporting war uh, where i live you can get fertilizer for free yeah in your garden yeah but you need fertilizer for feeding the world right top soil you need top soil and that's uh, diminishing uh, resource, right? You can get topsoil for free locally, and they give it away in my city as well. Every year, you can go get some topsoil. It's not the best quality, but you can get some, right? And you can put it in your yard and stuff, grow your own food. That's about basically, by the way, the best way to make sure the world becomes sustainable. Everyone should have a garden in their backyard. End of story. And most people should be raising chickens. You get your protein it's, and that's it. Like chickens and a garden. Most of the world's problem regarding resources in relation to food. Uh, a lot of energy issues will be uh, dealt with. A lot of the uh, pollutant pollution stuff will be dealt with. Just everybody should have chickens and, and a garden in their backyard uh, that you can grow on. And uh, 
there you go. So all these environmentalists and all the stuff that are blah, 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 how dare you, how dare you, they're all idiots, right? They're all puppets uh, in general. If the first thing they're not pushing is, oh, you want to save the planet? You want to stop wars? You, you want to make sure people are well fed and can take care of themselves? Anybody that has a backyard, a garden, right? A patio, you know, the city gets together, puts an organization together or a community gets together and they offer to go to everyone's homes and set up a garden and they give them a couple of chickens, two, two to four chickens and everybody grows their own food when they can and they have eggs all year round, a lot of eggs all year round, you get your protein, you get nutrient, end of story, right? It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer, right? Uh, Botswana uh, is blue, uh, blue too, I think. Botswana, 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 Botswana. Where's Botswana? <laughs> there we go, Botswana. I think so too. I think Botswana is blue as well, right? I think in Georgia, a new color revolution is about to start, but not sure, is it? Oh, crap, crap, right? Remember, Georgia was a smaller version of Ukraine. So Botswana, blue, let's put blue in Botswana, right? Maybe uh, we'll get to the, looking at the, the war uh, between Russia, uh, comparing Russia and US, as soon as we take care of a little bit more unless a little bit more of the board okay if I miss anything please let me know by the way da, 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 da. we don't need if there's anything that you think we should be putting on here uh, mark it down as Chicho and let me know like a country or something because I'm missing some chat by the way gang uh, da, 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 da. Chicho did you hear that Greta is protesting against wind turbine yeah yeah I heard it. I heard, I think, something to do with indigenous lands. Given uh, Greta is a, is a clown, uh, really, just a world economic forum puppet, right? But let's, just, let's, let's say a lot of people didn't notice when it first came up, right? But if they've even done this much research into it now of who she is, what she represents, where everything's going, and all this jazz flying with jets going into Davos and all this jazz, her replies, because she's not a girl anymore, right? Anybody that's looked into it past what they were exposed to it, like whatever years ago, right? When she was sailing across the ocean, so she wouldn't have to fly to save the environment. Well, meanwhile, her repertoire is flying with planes over there and she's taking a sailing cruise. Wee, 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 wee. Land in New York. Anybody that's looked beyond that, she's a clown, right? She's a clown. Sure, stripper, can you go into if uh, it's worth for Russia to deplete so much resources and be seen as the terrorist state for Ukraine? I don't think that they are, but let me ask you this for anyone that has, uh, okay, we've got to do this. To, to, to put this into perspective, we have to do this. You heard Botswana is very nice, nice. Uh, if I if I could, I've landed in uh, uh, ten years. I've landed I've, just for a day. <laughs> I flew from I not flew. I, I took the boat from thing down here. Doink, went across right from Spain. African countries. Uh, just curious on your opinion. Can you answer in a simple yes or no? If you you think it's worse, uh, Schumer says. Okay, let, let, let's answer that. I don't know. Yes or no. All questions can't be answered. Yes or no, right? Uh, we're not binary things. We're not zeros and one, right? So as soon as someone says, "Can you answer me yes or no?" That's a loaded question. No matter what it is, right? No matter what it is, because we're human beings. We're quantum beings, right? That's why quantum computing is gonna make it's gonna it's gonna completely reshape this quantum computing if it ever comes about because any password any transaction any currency any, it, it's gonna completely unravel the economic system right that's what we are we're quantum beings we have maybe we're not zeros and ones but i'm gonna read your question let's check it out 
let's check it out so shroom tripper says can you answer in a simple yes or no if you think it's worth for russia to sacrifice so so much to take over just a little bit of ukraine just curious on your opinion okay so you want a yes or no i'll throw the question back at you and answer you like this if you have another nation another person let's assume we're people because nations are to a certain degree defined as people right they're corporations entities right according to the united states corporations can make political donations just like people because they're defined as people right the definition they've changing definitions work right but if you're a person that's being poked and attacked right do you have a right to say slap the hands away right if that person or those people or those entities that are attacking you some of them have constantly said that they want to destroy you take you apart rip you apart rip you apart right because in poland in germany uh neocons in the united states they have said for a number of years that they want to rip apart russia balkanize it the way they did yugoslavia right consider this so that's one thing you got to consider consider this this area that eastern ukraine that's mainly russian speaking and has been mainly russian speaking for centuries right is the fertile land as we talked about topsoil in uh, in a short supply right and it's got a lot of industrial base right and access to the black sea right again centuries russian speaking even though ukrainian ukrainian it's like canada has two national languages english and french switzerland has three national languages german french italian i think there might be another one as well but i think it's national multiple languages in germany multiple languages in italy multiple languages in belgium multiple languages all over europe and this part of ukraine eastern ukraine that used to be russian speaking and it is russian speaking all of a sudden the western ukraine right they pass a law banning their language no longer taught in school no longer recognized as official language right compare what was happening in ukraine to what happened in georgia here's a here's a comment from lavrov i'm going to read this to you by the way gang apologies if i'm not reading the chat I'm just going to read this comment from Lavrov, which is Russia's um, do, 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 here it is, Russian foreign minister. Okay, here's comment from Russian foreign minister. You can go to my Twitter feed, and I retweeted this here. Let me bring up the Twitter feed. Boing. That's my Twitter thing, Majiki. Okay, you can go. There's a second one down right i just came across it he made this comment in i don't know if he made it in may 3rd but he just recently made it i think right uh russian foreign minister lavrov quote if you believe the u.s has the right to declare a threat to its national uh, national interests any place on earth like they did in yugoslavia iraq libya syria 10,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean. 10,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean. That they have the right to do so, and you don't ask them any questions. And Russia, not just over overnight, like they did in Iraq and elsewhere, but for more than 10 years, warning them, guys, you are doing something which is going to be very bad not across the ocean but just on our borders on territories where russians lived for centuries and centuries if this is not doable not a doable standard they am then i am not a minister end quote and here's the tweet by the way gang let me link it up for you guys so you know that i'm not just 
Doink. There's the tweet. Okay. You want a yes or no answer? We're human beings. I can give you a more detailed answer and put the question to you. What do you think? Do you think it was a good idea? I'm against war. There should never, ever be a need for war when quantum beings can communicate without censorship and suppression of information. Okay. And this, this war right here, right? This war right here. Something that Seymour Hirsch stated said it was the most devastating war in the last 40 years. I disagree with Seymour Hirsch. Seymour Hirsch, I believe, wanted to say it's the most devastating war uh, in Europe since World War II. I think this, he, he, he said most dev devastating war in the world since World War II or something like this. But I think he meant it in Europe, right? Because the Iran-Iraq war was way more devastating than what's happening in Ukraine by a long shot. The one that happened in the 1980s that was being supported, funded, equipped, trained, logistics, intelligence, for Iraq to use chemical weapons on Iran when Iraq invaded Iran, right? Way more devastating than what's happening in Ukraine. And I remember that no one stated that Iraq was doing the wrong thing in the Western world. I was a kid, but I saw what happened, right? So as a quantum being, I'm giving you a more complicated answer and i hope you can uh, come to your own conclusions okay. chicho uh joe chicho i thought that the climate emergency was the most pressing issue of our time but apparently sacred indigenous land is more important <laughs> crazy crazy uh but light uh for some reason Oh man, Twitch doesn't like race war for some reason. Let me read this. Uh, with the issue in South uh, South Africa, where farmers are being murdered and their land taken, the civil war, race war. Uh, good question. Um, is it a civil war? South Africa, is, it it's on the verge of collapse in large part, and it has been for a long time. But I would say it's a civil war. I think it's, I mean, we don't have a picture for a race war. Should we, like, I would not go live in South Africa right now. I knew someone that got married in South, uh, mar married to a South African. And this was like 20 years ago. And she said uh, she wouldn't live there because she loved the man. And uh, because they were South African, they had their base there and stuff like this. But she said, you know, she came back and we talked and stuff. And she said, she lives in a house that has big walls and barbed wire around the fence and she can't leave the compound without protection right and she didn't want to live there anymore that she got married and they were looking into moving uh, back to vancouver or she was anyway he would have to move there but they have to give up their own things so and this is 20 years ago south africa hasn't improved in 20 years economically i don't think uh Chicho, you have been to Gibraltar? I've been, uh, I don't think I, I went off Gibral, Gibral, Gibraltar. I went from, what's the city uh, that you catch the ferry from southern Spain to go to Tangiers? I forget what it is. I took that fast ferry they used to have. And this is like 25 years ago. So hopefully it's faster now. Right? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I'm scrolling all the way down again. I missed a lot of chat, so I'm just going to go straight down. Apologies. Uh, Aldegas says, South Africa is definitely helter-skelter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Explorer. Explorer of the world. Awesome. You came to a good live stream. Salutations. I saw an EU flag in the protest today in Georgia. It smells like funded for sure. Yeah, it's got to be. Uh, a second front against Russia. Is what the powers that be want yeah uh, tarifa al 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 -Ziras. i think it's al -Ziras. possibly i can't remember where it was and 
here check this out gang let's do this here here let's do this we'll do we'll do one thing right now because if they're hitting up georgia again with a civil war right so should we put yellow there in georgia for civil war should we put yellow because if it's a if the color revolution it's going to break into a civil war it will not be permitted to uh, destabilize the region and this region is going to go blow sky high anyway so uh not yet not yet okay not yet we'll take it down we'll take it down elder goss says not yet okay Oops, where am i let's take it down not yet okay uh, enzo i'm pretty sure that uh 100 billion can be uh can be better spent on our homeland rather than other dumb overs yeah yeah 100 percent. and you can guarantee more than 100 billion has gone to ukraine uh for this thing remember this thing didn't start on february 24th 2022 the main funding that came here okay started in the early 2010s build up to the coup right and for eight years they were arming the living daylights out of ukraine right arming the living daylights out of ukraine uh Elagor, chicho claim gibraltar and you can claim visiting the uk uh, <laughs> awesome. i'm pretty it wouldn't have been gibraltar because my euro pass was not available was not acceptable in uk land right uh but light two iranian warships are being allowed to dock in brazil causing major concerns yeah but brazil is lost brazil is lost uh when it went to lula okay when it went to lula however way you think it went and lula came out and said anyone that uh does not abide by the dictates of the state can be put in jail for eight years and fined thousands of dollars so no bodily autonomy in brazil and brazil uh did something with the ukraine war and brazil is flying to the united states i believe to meet with biden so brazil's part uh, lula is definitely a world economic forum puppet there's no doubt about it right uh, but the economics of it uh, will still continue because these guys it's a civil war so they're going to try to uh, not feed the unrest right but they are only a certain group of course right uh joe chicho off topic but what do you think of mariam williamson now she's running against biden mariam i don't know this person uh, williamson i don't joe i don't know her i don't know her uh, brazil has evil uh democratic policies currently but foreign policy is rather flexible with Lula. yeah foreign policy might change it's slowly going to change i think what is the conflict in norway in norway these guys norway helped the united states in collaboration with sweden denmark and the uk to blow up Nord stream 2. when they blew it up the next day norway opened up the pipeline new pipeline energy going to europe bang cha ching good money right that's war on russia right that's war on russia norway is supporting uh ukraine norway leaders bam uh seymour hirsch wrote an article actually about norway and the united states how they've been collaborating since vietnam war didn't know that right explorer you heard about the uh, opposition woman that is wf related that did want to coup belarus yeah 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 she's in jail for 15 years yeah she got 15 years in prison recently coups are all over the place uh, the last decade even changes in moldova recently where someone stepped down now they are more aggressive against russia yeah here's here's the thing check this out okay let me do the speedy gonzalez stuff you guys let me know if i'm missing anything okay in the last 20 years since putin came into power 23 years since putin came into power because in the 1990s nato western europe were literally looting russia for decade looting it looting it okay when putin came into power and became obvious that wait a second putin is a nationalist and is going to do what is right for russia there was a color revolution let's do let's do it red well 
let's do civil let's do let's do yellow there was a color revolution in georgia attempted coup in georgia okay there was a coup in ukraine okay there was an attempted coup in kazakhstan okay there was uh attempted coup in belarus Uh, in these countries here, the three countries up here, there's flipping flopping, right? There was an attempted coup in uh, Hungary, right? I believe it was an attempted coup in Hungary with uh, Orban, right? Attempted coup there. Okay. What else? What else? Uh, those are the ones I can remember. Those are the ones I can remember. Am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? Okay. Am I missing anything? Because if you look at this and you're Russia, you're going to go, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Right? Because this is Russia. Right? And from the looks of it, from the looks of it, and all of these were attempted coups against leaders that were pro-Russian, right? And they were all, to a certain degree, color revolutions. They all were CIA funded. They succeeded in overthrowing Ukraine with a coup. They failed in Belarus. They failed in Hungary. They failed in Georgia. And this was a hot war in Georgia, right? And they failed in Kazakhstan, right? So, as the saying goes, or as the saying was going, right, in Iran, when all that push in the mid-2000s, all the hoo-ha that was going around regarding Iran, this is Iran, right? Here, let's put, let's put, this is Iran, and in the mid-2000s, U.S. had military bases here. Here, here, on the uh, Qatar, they still have it there. Iraq, okay. NATO here, okay. And they have uh, Oman. I don't know if they have a military base, but if you're looking at this, if you were looking at this, right? No brainer, right? You would go, oh, oh, oh. That's that's what you would think, right? Would you not? If I was in Iran, I'd go, damn. What? Why did we place our country in the middle of U.S. military bases? Well, why would we do that? How stupid of us to put our country right in the middle of U.S. military bases. Hmm. Next time, we'll, we'll try to do better, right? Next time, we'll try to do better. This surrounding Russia looks pretty much the same, does it not? If we put the arrows in the right direction, right? If we put the arrows in the right direction, Russia. Georgia. Oh, this was too, oh, I forgot to draw the arrow on Turkey going in too. Would it even look worse? Belarus, Ukraine, Hungary. You would sort of be going, what's going on, right? What's going on, right? Finland is trying to, uh, doctor, Finland is trying to join NATO. And from what I understand, the Finns don't really like the russians too much and don't forget i believe if i remember my history if i remember my history finland sided with nazi germany did it not in world war ii oh my god in world war ii was finland in support of uh, initially anyway uh, the germans true that's true right 
if I recall correctly. Right. They did, yes. Yeah. So here, should we put another arrow on Finland? There you go. And then there is Norway and Sweden. Like, we're not even counting. Like, do I have orange? I don't think I have orange. I don't have orange of these. So this is all really orange pushing this way, right? Like, literally. Like, what the fuck? Whoever that was here, do, do, did Russia do the right thing? Well, what the fuck? What would you do if this was you? You'd be sitting there just like Iranians saying, oh, how stupid of us. Why did we put our country in the middle of an attack going in this direction? Stupid of us. right? We should have taken our country and put it somewhere else so we wouldn't have to be worried about NATO moving east. right? How stupid of us. Right, Joe, uh, uh, so Joe, quote, Finland allied itself with Nazi Germany during the Second World War, not to prevent Soviet conquest, but to win back territories lost to the USSR as a result of the Winter War of 1939-1940. Okay. Well, they made the wrong decision. Right. Because even though if they were supposedly fighting a war to win back territory, uh, they didn't win. They sided with the wrong side. And that's the diplomacy to a certain degree. By the way, if like this is what you would do when you're gaming, right? So, for example, one of the greatest diplomacy games ever created is uh, the, is the game board game called Diplomacy, right? And diplomacy is this exactly, right? You have two types of pieces. You have ships and you have land pieces. You don't have, it's not a micromanagement of war like board games like Squad Leader or Panzer Blitz, right? It's more of a macro management, macro of waging war where seasons pass very fast. And you only have two, seriously, two different types of pieces, land pieces and sea pieces, okay? And it's literally the best strategy board game ever created. Nothing comes close. No, because there's no dice involved or anything. It's about majority takes a landmass. And it's all this. And there's like, you could play with seven people. And it's all just diplomacy. Like literally just talk. There's no chance involved. It's a brilliant game. And one day we're going to look at it. Uh, doing an ASMR type of thing. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Elega, Chicho. Uh, you have been to Gibraltar. I have been to Gibraltar. <laughs> no, wait a second. Oh, that kicked me up. The chat kicked me way up. Da -da 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 -da. I think Finland did get those territories back during the war. Did they, Joe? Yeah, but did they, did they get to keep them? I think without the alignment with Germany in World War II, Finland would be owned by Russia right now. You think so? Maybe. I don't know the history of that part. All I know is Finland sided with Germany against Russia or sided with Germany during World War II. I don't know the reasons or anything. Uh, okay, where are we? Uh, got those territories back. Uh, Finland, uh, we attacking Russia? That's what it looks like. Oh, we got Finland signed the anti Comintern uh, pact against Russia. So they, in my opinion, are completely in line with the Ukrainian freedom. <laughs> are they? Damn. Yeah. Plutonic players. Finland joining the, the, uh, the NATO is exactly this time of war against russia is a signal yeah but finland hasn't is not hasn't been accepted into nato yet right they're trying to but i think they pulled it out because turkey said no right joe uh, chicho uh, finland lost uh, karelian to 
Russia in 1940 and got it again in 1941. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, so was Finland allowed to keep all that, whatever they were able to gain after World War II? Did they pay a price at all? A Finnish dude says we don't own uh, Karjala. Okay, Finnish dude, Finnish dude stepping in. But they, uh, da, da, da. Uh, shroom, shroom. Do you think Ukraine is with U.S. because Zelensky is a Jew? No, no. I think Ukraine is controlled by the U.S. because it's a proxy war in Russia. It doesn't have anything to do with Judaism, not Judaism, or anything like this, right? Right. One of the theories you could think about is this, which some people talk about, right? Oh, Zelensky was put into power because he's half Jewish, so he could send all the Nazis to the Donbass so Russia could kill all the Nazis. So Zelensky is actually a Russian agent, right? Because the number one enemy of fascists, the number one enemy of Nazis are Russians, right? That's what Eastern Front was about, right? Like 85% of Germany's Nazi Germany's resources during World War II were put on the Eastern Front, right? Nazi Germany did not lose World War II because of Normandy. Normandy was, you know, one of the slashes that made them bleed, right? But Nazi Germany lost World War II because of Russia, right? That's it. Okay, if Russia was not involved, if Nazi Germany hadn't attacked Russia, right? This would have been Nazi Germany for a long time. Right? Maybe not the UK, because I don't think uh, Hitler wanted to occupy the UK ever. Right? This would have been fascist for a long time if they didn't attack Russia. Right? Oh, so Karelia is a republic in Russia. Okay. Okay. The, the Chicho. Uh, Explorer Chicho, we have to look out for Turkey. A coup failed in the past, yeah. And now all opposition parties are. Uh, oh, I got kicked up again. All opposition parties are burp, 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 are teaming up to beat Erdogan again. Yeah. And by the way, one other thing we forgot: there was a coup in Turkey, and it was Russia. By all accounts, this coup here in Turkey that happened when they tried to get rid of. Erdogan, right? He was on a plane heading somewhere to Africa, somewhere, right? And Russia, this is by, all, by the accounts I followed at the time, it was a Western back coup against Erdogan, and Russia prevented that Western back coup uh, from removing Erdogan because they had they had the other leader in place in the United States training as a backed by the United States to take over Turkey, right? And Erdogan realized that the West was attempting to coup him and his regime, and it is a regime, right? A brutal one, dictatorship, really, a very corrupt one, right? But the person that we're trying to put into place was even more corrupt, it was just a puppet, okay? You could say Erdogan is not a puppet, okay? And that at that moment, that's when Turkey began its shift to the east. That was an extremely, extremely bad move from the west, right? So keep this in mind. They failed in Georgia, removed. That's what they were planning. They failed in Turkey, removed. NATO failed the attempted coup. They failed in, they failed in Hungary. They failed in Belarus. They failed in Kazakhstan. And Finland, this was trying to join NATO. And that's failed as well because Turkey went no. So if we change the colors and put pink as Russia, Georgia is not Russian, Turkey is not Russian but but they are not nato controlled right 
So either neutral or in Belarus's case, supporting Russia. Hungary, they're doing as much as they can. Finland is NATO. Finland is NATO. If you're Russian, that looks way better than what it looked like when all of these arrows were pointing at them. Right? This is diplomacy. This is interesting. Right? All these wars, why can't humans get along? Indeed, 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 indeed. Captain Obvious. Uh, why does the U.S. have to? Uh, where is it? Why does the U.S. have have the greatest people but the worst government? Good question. Now, I don't know if I would say greatest people. People are great everywhere. On all governments in general are extremely bad. And why oh, we got away with da 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 da? da. We we'll listen to the Karelians. Da, 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 da. The ties change. The ties change. Gang, let's do another thing. Okay. So let's bring out our these guys again. Let's take these guys down. Okay. Let's do what we planned on doing, which is let's map out how many countries, right? How many countries the United States have been militarily involved in the last 40 years and how many countries Russia has been militarily involved in in the last 40 years. Okay, I'll give you the ones I know about Russia. In the last 40 years, Russia was in Afghanistan. Okay, Russia was involved militarily in Afghanistan. They are definitely involved in Ukraine. Okay, and they are involved in Syria. Okay, we'll put Syria just here. Okay, am I missing anything regarding Russia? This is the coolest TV ad for risk. I've ever seen Barb's. Barb says, hilarious. Diplomacy. Diplomacy better than risk. Uh, Axis and allies better than risk. So order of games would go. Axis and allies is actually fantastic. But uh, risk is the lowest. It's, it's a good game. It's a fun game. But if you want to kick it up a notch, Axis and allies. And if you want a different version without the dice and a lot of diplomacy and People backstabbing and living daylights out of each other without set parameters. Diplomacy. You need more markers for the US. We will. I got the yellows lined up. So, United States involved militarily. Militarily, right? Panama in the last 40 years. Uh, Nicaragua? El Salvador? Okay, you guys fill me in in which other countries in Central America and South America. Vietnam would have been 50 years. We're not going to include Vietnam, Cheryl, because we're going to start it at 1980, not 1970, because 1970 Vietnam would have been in the game as well. But so would Russia. But Russia, I don't think Russia had Russians fighting in there too. Wait, not done with Russia. Not done with Russia. What else in Russia? Yeah, Axis and Allies uh, provides maps like this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, 80 zone. 80 zone. Don't forget Grenada. 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 Where's Grenada? Grenada's here somewhere. It's really small. <laughs> Where's Grenada? I might have gone over it. Ah, oh, there it is, Grenada. Grenada? Georgia, Moldova, uh, oh, Russia, yeah, 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 Georgia. Was Russia involved in Moldova militarily? Was Russia involved in Moldova militarily? I don't remember that one. Micro twist, hello, hello, salutations. Philippines? In the last 40 years, United States? Not about Marcos working out in the yeah, yeah. Oh, we need confirmation on Moldova. I don't remember Russia being uh, involved in Moldova militarily. Tajikistan civil war. 
Russia was involved in it militarily? Well, on the 20th day of February, Anthony Blinken visited uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Kazakhstan for cooperation, growth, and connectivity, seeking influence, it seems, in the backyard of Russia. Yeah, and what did Kazakhstan do? They shipped over, they just announced that they're shipping over all their uranium to be kept in Russia. <laughs> what a failure. What a failure Blinken is, right? Enzo, America has been in 19 wars since World War II. Here's a list of the death toll uh, from three of the bloodiest conflicts, the Korean, the Vietnam, uh, and wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. The total death toll, toll of people killed by American troops uh, in all these wars put together is over 12 million. I, I think it would, would it be more? Because there was, in Vietnam, when they were fighting in Vietnam, there was a silent war, not so silent, in Cambodia and Laos, and they killed like 2 million people in Cambodia and Laos together. So I'm assuming it might be more than 12 million, which is crazy when you put the numbers together, right? Man. Transist Transistoria war, apparently. Really? Moldova. So where are we? So here as well, it's really small, so it's showing up twice. So they were involved in the uh, Transistria. It's a little strip uh, along Moldova's east, uh, eastern uh, border. Uh, big demonstration of Putin and authorities now in Tbilisi, Georgia, yeah. They're trying to do another color revolution in Georgia. Too bad. Over 20 million. It would be so many. It would be so many. Uh, I reckon Russia and Moldova got into a few skirmishes in 1992, but never got into any major conflict. Okay, we'll count it as Russia being involved. Just about every uh, civil conflict in former uh, Soviet states. But there would be civil war. There would be direct war that Russia was involved in, Cheryl, right? Zare afternoon afternoon congrats bro <laughs> you know what i mean the u.s needs to stop getting involved in foreign wars so that uh, uh we can pay for every redneck to get a pickup truck. i don't know about that but i did okay captain that's okay mod auto mod zapped it for some reason strangely russia and ukraine were involved in, in that war as allies were they wow soviet forces occupied east germany until 1989 but it wasn't a war it was an occupation right so are we counting that east germany because the wall fell down like we have to make a distinction if you know tanks were firing planes were dropping bombs versus just military being there if we're going to do military being there shit United States has military all over Europe. So if we count every U.S. military base, I think there's 185. I don't have enough of these to put 185 military bases all around the world. We're talking about just actively bombing, right? Uh, Russia was involved in a war in Central African Republic? Really? Russia were obviously uh, dealing uh, the civil wars that follow a break of uh, yeah it, uh, right Libya Yemen and Somalia for the US yeah so let's hit it up Libya Somalia Yemen okay these are the ones I know right Iraq Syria okay. Afghanistan What else? What else? What else? What else? Well, Ukraine. Right. What else? What else? In the last 40 years, United States. What else do we know? Where else? Where else? 
is not the same. Yeah. Military occupations is not the same as having a base plan. Ah, that is true. That is true. That is true. That is true. But that was basically at the end, just leaving. Like there weren't, again, planes weren't dropping bombs. Tanks weren't firing shells, right? Platonic plurus. Yes, the Soviet was one of the two bipolar world powers. But the situation now is different. Pax America, uh, after the Cold War, now it may shift to a more multipolar. I agree, it's going to go to a multipolar world. In December 1995, the first U.S. ground troops deployed to Bosnia, Herzegovina, Arpia, Yugoslavia. I mean, this area, like, just annihilated it, right? U.S. has 800 military bases globally? No, not 800. I think it's 180 or something. Or is it 800? Yeah. Uh, Joe Chicho, didn't they use drones in Pakistan? Yeah, yeah, they were bombing. Yeah, actually, we're talking about bombing. Then, yeah, actively bombing Pakistan. It's crazy. What a nut thing to do. Right? Yeah, indeed. For freedom, my butthole. I don't defend all regimes or governments, Plutonic Plurus says, of the world. But every time a neocon globalist regime change project fails, it is a good thing. Yeah, I agree. Russia-Georgia war was like five days. Yeah, yeah. But we're, we're still counting it as a war. I mean, compare that to 20 years of occupation uh, for NATO countries of Afghanistan. Nine years of occupation, Russia out of Afghanistan. Compare that to two wars uh u.s waged in iraq right oh yeah united states missile bomb clinton sudan so i would say that was a war if we're saying bomb the place because in 19 in the mid 1990s mid 1990s in the mid 1990s a ship in the persian gulf i believe right sent a missile on the orders of Clinton, right? Trying to kill Osama bin Laden, which was CIA agent, right? Under orders of Clinton, the United States sent a missile to Afghanistan, killed some civilians, and sent a missile to Sudan and destroyed the only, the only uh, animal pharmaceutical company, okay, that was also producing medicine for people. I believe medicine for people as well in this whole region of africa right they destroyed a pharmaceutical company on the orders of clinton from the persian gulf a ship sent a missile to afghanistan killed innocent people and sent a missile to sudan and destroyed a pharmaceutical company the only one in this whole region because of that because of that there was a lot of cattle, a lot of livestock died because they couldn't get the vaccines for their animals and medication for their animals, and a lot of people died. That was a, one missile or a couple of missiles, maybe they sent. They might have double topped it, right? That one destruction of a pharmaceutical company killed untold tens of thousands of people, maybe millions. Monsieur balls 800 military bases in other countries which cost an estimated estimated 100 billion annually annually a number that could be much higher depending on whether you count the bases still open in iraq and afghanistan wow really 800 military bases now last time i looked at it military bases was in the early 2000s and it was like i think 185 or 200 Joe Chicho, what would, uh, what could, uh, you consider Trump hitting the general from Iran uh, with a drone? Yeah, but that was in Iraq, so we marked it. They haven't. Well, Israel has hit Iran with the help of the CIA, 
but they haven't thank whatever god you believe in that nato the west has not attacked iran if that happens gang load up on food supplies load up on medicine you should be doing that anyway right now um, because the shit just got real right monsieur american university professor david vine in his forthcoming book base nation in which he seeks to quantify the financial environmental and human cost of keeping these ba bases open yeah i know the environmental aspect of it of u.s military sites because i've gone to decommissioned military sites in uh, yukon and bc and alberta okay decommissioned military u.s uh, military sites to do environmental assessment on them and find out how much environmental damage uh, they've released and it, it was devastating it was quite huge one of the military sites they had in yukon right they just packed up and left and before they left they dug a gigantic trench and just put whatever barrels of whatever they had into the ground and buried it right and it was right beside a river uh, it was right beside a river salmon run river right i did the geophysics work on it right so in yukon it was a it was here's a river right river 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 major salmon run right military base was here it was quite large we did environmental survey geophysics on it the first people to go on well first people are just people do history and stuff right and i found personally i found a huge area where they had dug the ground up and whatever barrels they had that was full of whatever it was they just put them into the ground and covered it up right? it went from a natural preserve area salmon run bears places grizzlies we had people stationed to protect us from grizzlies grizzlies there that's how big of a salmon run it uh, river it was right how important it is right and it went from complete nature to level one contamination zone where they cordoned us off and for you to walk in you have to wear a suit right because they didn't know what was in there u.s military site right a river leaking containers for since 1960s and the only reason we knew it was there we were sent there was because the backhoe driver at the time canadian backhoe driver at the time i think it was canadian backhoe driver it was a backhoe driver at the time that did the work he was a young kid okay and in the late 1990s environmental stuff was becoming more and more important and he went you know what i did some work for u.s military site that i think that's pretty bad so he reported what he did he didn't know where it was buried he knew it was at the military site and he buried the hole and covered it up and we were one of the first people to go in there and try to find it and we found it okay so as you say 800 military sites one of them would have been here that was the commission 1960s i believe okay See if he's running around everywhere in Afghanistan. Uh, okay, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm just all the way to the bottom, gang. It's the, uh, that way. If there's anything directed towards me, please let me know. Food shortages. Uh, Enzo. Yeah, just read this. There are roughly 750 U.S. foreign military bases. They are spread across 80 nations. Crazy. Reckon, I mean, Japan has a few of them for sure, but 800, I didn't realize it was that high. Maybe I looked at it from the major main military bases before. Recognition regarding food shortages. Do you think the Ohio chemical spill will, will really negatively impact the food supply chain? Like all the farm farmers in that area are crying out. Yeah, yeah I think so. And the food supply is going to be tainted, right? Uh, not nice not nice very bad very bad very bad very bad I put out a little video uh, in the last few days that was from a segment that we did in the previous either previous one or the one before that 
mapping global conflicts that I explained because I did environmental work. So I explained what might be happening here with the with the trail derailment, derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, right? So you can look that up. You should be able to find it. Just do Chicho and uh, uh, train derailment. Do East Palestine. You should, that video should pop up. It should be available on all our four video sharing platforms. I think I uploaded them into all of those platforms. So preferably go to Bitchute, Rumble, or Odyssey. Uh, you should be able to find them there, easy peasy. Okay. Uh, and that would be my take regarding this environmental catastrophe. Really. Monsieur, thank you very much for the follow. Salute, salute. If they store depleted uranium ammo, da, 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 da. yeah, back then it wouldn't have been depleted uranium. Uh, I I know one of them they cracked open. It, it was liquids. They have to take samples and send them off. Luckily, I don't get involved uh, with geophysics. Most of the work we did was in non intrusive, so I didn't have to deal with the chemicals. U.S. troops were in Haiti. Oh, yeah, Haiti, Haiti, Haiti. Indeed, 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 indeed. Haiti, Haiti, Haiti. Canada, too. Canada was involved in that. 100% Haiti. Were they bombing? They were shooting. They were killing some of the people in Haiti. Uh, we can take it off. The king. We can take it off if you want. But this was definitely... A war being waged on uh, citizens of Haiti. There's no doubt about it. But we can take it off because it wasn't tanks doing it. So let's take it off since we did the definition. Yeah, let's do it. Let's take it off. Okay. Why not? Yo, I didn't miss the stream this time. Nice. Availability. How are you doing? Where are you from? Slovakia. Slovakia. Slovakia is talking together. I believe the UK has about 150 foreign bases, really. How many does Russia have? How many does Russia have? And so my wife is from the Michalovich. Where is that? Okay. So that's the situation that we see in the last 40 years. These are the wars that the United States was involved in, and those are the wars that Russia was involved in. Okay. And Georgia, someone pointed out, we're not even putting NATO US in there. It's it was definitely a color revolution. Georgia was being armed by NATO, trained by NATO. So this was a five day war. Right? Syria's still going. This was a nine year war. Ukraine's still going. Moldova was what? How many days did it go? <laughs> like a week? Right? Russia has twenty military bases. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. I love the map work you chose. Well, thanks. I like it too. I love maps. Really. Uh, Russia has about 36 out of God says. Russia has bases in the Arctic. Yeah. Well, they border there. One of the reasons Denmark is involved big time is because of Greenland. That way they have access to the Arctic and Canada as well. Right. Is a Russian marker near China, uh, Tajikistan? Um, this one afghanistan afghanistan i don't think russia was involved militarily in tajikistan in tajikistan as well like tanks and stuff in the last 40 years yes or no can we get confirmation on that uh zara chicho it is my personal opinion that the financial institutions incentivize nefarious activities all over the world which in if any of those institutions do you think are backing modern day wars as smedley butler would say all wars are bankers wars all wars are bankers wars right now it doesn't mean your local bank there like a credit union but centralized banks and the 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 money managers right that's slowly changing by the way that's slowly changing um, I think as well, but all wars are bankers' wars. And what did uh, uh, Philip Agi say? Philip Agi say financial. He was a financial hitman, right? 
So Philip Adji was a CIA officer that was waging war on, helping wage war on Cuba for a long time. I mean, U.S., we should be putting it yellow here. Oh, Bay of, no, Bay of Pigs was <laughs> before 1980, right? But Philip Adji was a CIA uh, financial terrorist. That's what he called him, uh, himself, right? And he took asylum in Cuba. He defected from the United States to Cuba, right? CIA agent because he, he was sick and tired of helping to kill people. Okay. So I think all wars are bankers' wars. I'm with Smedley Butler. Uh, best 50, 50, I live in Denmark for the last five years. Nagushka, my favorite uh, stand is the one from Austin Powers. Da, 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 da. Availability, Russian nuclear sub on coast equals aggression. American sub on coast of China equals freedom. Like words gone mad, yeah? Yeah. The king, Russia was involved in Tajikistan civil war in the 1990s. Okay. Did they have Russian tanks? Fight? See, backing civil war is a different game. This this shouldn't go up as waging war. If you're going to put backing civil war, then, oh shit, Honduras, uh, Bolivia, Bolivia, Venezuela, or for the United States, that would be backing civil war. Unless Russian troops were on the ground and Russian planes were bombing, were they bombing? in Tajikistan yeah financial hitman that was Philip Aji uh, it's got a nice tone to it yeah rush so Russian troops and tanks was it officially Russia waging war I, I need confirmation uh, the king I need confirmation for at least one other person okay before I can put it up Joe that is a quote from uh, Wikipedia so make it so make of it what you will da, 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 da. what was the quote oh here's a quote uh, quote most fighting so here's a quote most fighting in the early parts of the war occurred in the southern part of the country but by 1996 the rebels were battling russian troops in the capital city of Dusha. that's a quote from wiki <laughs> i don't consider wikipedia as a source as seconding anything i take you guys' word over Wikipedia regarding geopolitics and uh, and economics in large part. Data, yeah. Like just straight up math, okay. But politics, no. I wouldn't take that as a second. Uh, that doesn't mean, re that doesn't confirm anything. Plutonic floors. Russia had a lot of power, stability politics, and interventions after the the solution of the soviet union yeah yeah for sure and gang do not forget do not forget our regular uh, message doesn't hasn't popped up for a while but free assange free assange free assange because as he said lies start wars the truth can start peace right he's a journalist he's a publisher that's been crucified by central power in the western world because he's been working towards getting transparency and accountability into our world, something that we desperately, desperately need in our societies, right? For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Sensor 2. Uh, the king says, okay, Russia was not sending letters. They were sending munitions and tanks. You know how many wars, civil wars, United States, European countries, NATO, has been sending <laughs> agents, uh, funds, weapons to? So if we're going to do that, fuck, all of Africa is going to be this. Like all of it. All of it. From from Sierra Leone, where is it? Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone. Oh, I lost it there. From Sierra Leone to oh, everywhere to Congo. I mean, all of this area. Jesus, all of this. Area. It's all gonna be. It's all gonna be. So we can't. We can't include just funding and supplying weapons as war. 
they have to be actively the government has to be actively stating that they're bombing right we're at war right second half so yeah docs store quote wikipedia is the best thing ever <laughs> anyone in the world can write anything they want about any subject so you know you are getting the best possible information <laughs> michael's gone <laughs> julian Assange is a hero for god's sake he deserves to be free indeed indeed the king i'm going to read your quote the king just because and you spy in a link but only me and Mods are allowed to supply a link but i'm going to read your quote uh quote july 1993 about 25 russian border guards were killed in a clash during the second week with muslim opposition fighters backed by afghan mujahideen russian security minister v baronekov stated that quote an effective defense of the of the borders of the former soviet union serves the interests of uh, cis countries and national interest of russia he added that the presence of over 200,000 ethnic russians in tajikistan placed the region in russia's direct sphere of influence okay but this doesn't the, the russia military military uh deploy actively to go wage war in tajikistan from what you're saying terrorists killed russian guards that's not russia being a war right right did russia send missiles into tajikistan and blew shit up the way clinton sent a missile into sudan to blow up a pharmaceutical factory right did they do that funding doesn't matter the king dude if you're gonna say funding then fucking all of africa you're just this week just this week the president of congo was it congo told the french fucking macron piece of crap hey macron you fucking pieces of crap western european imperialist that keep on saying african nations must be more trans must provide more must do more you fuckers get out right mali just kicked out france if we're gonna say supporting fucking france sent soldiers into mali two years ago right but we're not gonna put it on even though french troops were actively waging war there i'm pretty sure russia didn't even do what france did in mali right availability i'd argue the world has been at war with itself since the beginning of man the lack of accountability and acknowledgement that we're in perpetual war takes out awareness the young need to be educated on war and how we can avoid it 100 percent agree availability that's why gore vidal's book perpetual war for perpetual peace is a must read especially for every american every american okay it's a short book thin book gore vidal perpetual war for perpetual peace read it okay read it gang plutonic plurus from a from a realist school of ir theory perspective all neighbor countries of russia are the direct sphere of security concerns of a greater power like russia plutonic process joe joe there doesn't seem to be any resource on the touch civil war available online at least not in english yeah as far as i know if you know my memory might be but i don't remember russia actively being one in Tajikistan. okay isn't Tajikistan part of uh shanghai cooperation organization c or the, no that's a security pact csto i think so i think so nagushka hey macron fuck you <laughs> explorer of the world russia didn't use air force or bombings i, I think yeah 
Should we ask ChatGPT3? I'm curious. Anybody have a counter? <laughs> sure, Pavel, but I uh, don't. I take ChatGPT's feedback as seriously as I do Wikipedia's, which means I don't. Right. France should uh, should go the Gaul <laughs> again. S'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît, <laughs> please. I mean, the chat is just a program that cross-references the internet and vomits out words. Agreed. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> the king, if, you, if I told you that the U.S. had troops deployed in Tajikistan, I don't think you would be as hesitant to put it. No, I wouldn't put a marker there. If, if you told me right now that the United States has troops in Tajikistan, I wouldn't put a marker there. Has the U.S. actively bombed Tajikistan. As far as I know, no. Right? Where did, where did, oh yeah, for example, US has troops. US has troops in Taiwan right now. But we're not putting a big yellow on there because US has not actively bombed Taiwan in the last 40 years or involved in a war in Taiwan to defend Taiwan from China if there is an attack from China. So I'm not putting one of these guys in Taiwan. Why would I put one of those uh, for Tajikistan? No, no, I wouldn't. It has to be actively like bombing. That's what we're talking about here, right? That's, and by the way, keep this in mind. Russia's here. This is where Russia was involved. United States is fucking here. <laughs> this is where it's involved. What the fuck? Like, wait, wait. Uh, like how, how where are we going like what the fuck this is russia's neighborhood it, where's us's neighborhood that that doesn't look like us neighborhood to me right you have to take that into consideration there's so much wrong with what we're seeing here like really anybody that gets a visual of this and doesn't get it like what the f what the f Right? Lark Park, Emmanuel Macron can go straight to hell. I'm glad an egg was thrown at him a while ago, including the time when someone was randomly going to hit him. Oh, I saw that one. The guy slapped him, I think. Cool, I'm all the way in the bottom. Reclan, oh, I don't think that's a good argument. I'm pretty sure the fact that Venezuela and Cuba are near the u.s aren't reasons for them to do what they uh, they do to them no but this isn't really bordering venezuela is not bordering and bordering the u.s every every country that you except for afghanistan okay afghanistan was a again that was a ukraine that the united states did they were they started supporting mujahideen we talked about this mujahideen fanatics islamic fanatics in afghanistan and overthrew a communist government that was allies with russia and the government itself asked russia to intervene right that's what they did when the united states went in there the afghan government didn't ask the united states to go in there right so there's a big difference like a lot of people say oh it's the same thing no afghanistan the only same thing with russia invading afghanistan and nato united states really invading afghanistan the only similarity between them is afghanistan is the empire killer right afghanistan was one of the nails that put the final nail in the coffin for the ussr and afghanistan is a major nail putting the nail in the coffin for the american empire for the western empire right but the difference the big difference is this the afghan government at the time asked for help from russia as far as i remember check into it right the afghan and russia was there for nine years the afghan government after 9 11 tried to do everything to make sure the nato forces the united states would not invade afghanistan they were fighting against them right big effing difference big effing difference if a nation invites you in to your country to help them that's a big difference so for example in syria we put this in russia is involved in a war here yes 
but the Syrian government asked Russia to help them. The United States is occupying a third of Syria, and the Syrian government is telling the United States to get the fuck out. The Syrian government doesn't want the United States in Syria. The Syrian government wants Russia in Syria. So if we look at the nuances on here, we actually have to take the shit off. Right? Like, the, the, the low IQ level of conversation with, 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 with people trying to justify this in fucking insanity is insane. Right? It's insane. Rickland, oh, I don't think that's a good, okay, I read that one. But King, Russia is geographically closer to the most volatile part of the world than the US. Why is this the most volatile part of the world, right? Really, that's your justification. Russia is closer to the most volatile part of the world. Last time I checked, my great-grandmother was born in Tiflisi, Georgia. I have ancestry from georgia tiflisi georgia right last i checked georgia was not unstable it became unstable once it was a color revolution they tried to put them into nato bordering russia so easy to demolish anyone supporting this insanity like it's ridiculously easy it's like trying to take candy away from fucking two-year-old crazy availability people can cry about russia being bad guy all they want if russia was really genocidal it would have wiped ukraine off the face of the map this age of inform information has been doink where to go has been as much a curse as it is a blessing it's as lethal as it's helpful yeah for those people that really want to put the time in and you, you can't you can't get caught up with this right what what this shows just by reading you know doing research for a week i know a lot of this stuff because i've been following politics for decades for decades right okay you have to there's a lot of armchair warriors that have come on board and fly ukrainian flags and you should have seen the number of arguments i got into with with people trying to justify the invasion of afghanistan and iraq iraq was insane man i remember sitting in a pub in vancouver with friends and stuff like this and a whole bunch of fucking low iq dumbasses we were talking about the war what was going on and it was i was going to peace pro peace rallies trying to stop the war at least Canada's involved in invading Iraq, right? And we were talking about this, and a bunch of yahoos across from us drinking beer, right? I love going to pubs, like it's fucking beautiful chaos, right? Bunch of yahoos over there turned to me and said, We're gonna win, we're gonna win. I go, What the fuck are you gonna win? Right? They're like, What do you mean? I go, What the fuck are you gonna go? You're gonna go in there and kill a whole bunch of fucking unarmed Arabs? You idiots, you idiots. Do you know what I fucking went off on them, right? And the last thing I said to them, I said, you fucking morons. You think this is a good thing invading Iraq? Go fucking sign up right now. Shut the fuck up, right? My friends were like, Chicho, take it easy. I go, fuck that noise. They're about to kill fucking millions of people. And they think we're going to win? You're going to win fucking what? Right? Idiots, idiots. rank 118 salutations almost fell off my chair when i read today's headline that a pro-ukrainian group blew up north stream <laughs> you know shit the u.s is, is pro-ukraine yeah crazy rickland you cannot say that uh and be serious people can cry oh that yeah you're replying to that guy serious they're actively genociding ukrainians by the letter of the law by shipping them out and putting ethnic uh, Russians in. The only reason they haven't done it to the rest of the country is the fact that they don't uh, have control of it. Crimea, Cry <laughs> are we? Crimea was only 
handed over in the boundary of Ukraine because of Stalin in 1954, if I recall correctly. This is 95% Russian. Russian ancestry for centuries, right? And because of the USSR, to for the bureaucracy of it, he drew the line and said, Crimea, Ukraine. We'll put it under the umbrella of Ukraine because of bureaucracy. That's what fucking bureaucracy is, right? And now people are fucking in the West. People in the West are crying foul because they think what Stalin did was right. Mass murdering fucking genocidal psychopath Stalin, right? We in the West are waging war to get Crimea under the umbrella, the boundary of a line that a mass murdering fucking psychopath drew most likely in a drunken night. The fucking insanity of it. Fucking insanity of it. Right? <laughs> that would you that's Wimmy. Are you supposed WS you gotta look at the rest of the stream. I can't go into it. We've been going off on this. We've been going off. How's our timing? We're already over time. We're already over time. Yugoslavia wars is a sad tale. Such a sad tale. Such a sad tale. Brainwashed. I was at one point too in Yugoslavia, by the way. Oh, hold four weeks. I remember going to a local pub and I had some Serbian friends and Yugoslavian friends and Croatian friends in this pub. A conversation went and I was like, I know I'm being lied to. Uh, so I sat down at a table and asked them what's going on. And they explained it to me. Right? And they explained it to me. Rickland, I'm going to read this. Uh, you might not have noticed, Chicho, but Ukraine did not go to war with Russia over its invasion of Crimea, no, nor did NATO. I agree that if the Crimeans voted for it, they should be part of Russia. However, Russia invaded the rest of Ukraine while saying they would, um, da, 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 where is it? They were only taking over the DPR and the uh, LPR and then killing the people there uh, to regardless of, uh, no, the, the coup in 19 and two, uh, 2014 is huge, man. It's fucking huge. When they came in and then, the Ukrainian Nazis bird burned Russians alive in a building. They started attacking the East because the East wanted to do what Crimea. They didn't even want to do what Crimea did. Crimea voted to join Russia. The Eastern Ukraine just wanted autonomy, partial autonomy, and they wanted to speak their own language. And then the, the Western Ukraine said, oh, Crimea is ours too. This is ours. No, 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 no. You can't rewrite history like that, man. Uh, availability. Ukraine's army was dog shit. That's why Merkel kept lying to the Russians about working things out. She only recently said it was to buy time to rearm Ukraine to fight Russia. Yeah, they were just building it, building it for eight years, funding, funding it through billions of dollars from Western taxpayer money to do this war. Everybody knows that now. Cheryl got to run. Yeah, me too. Gotta call it. Gotta call it. Gotta go teach some mathematics. Have a great weekend, everyone. You too, Cheryl. Thank you for staying. Uh, thank you for being here gang let's call the stream thank you for being here um, sometimes I go off sometimes I don't I went off a little bit um, a little too much maybe but we did what we did gang thank you for being here if you want to follow this work I'm on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y c-h-o for those of you that are supporting this work on patreon on substack on twitch on sensor tube and all of our other platforms thank you for your support thank you for being here thank you for the discussion uh mods 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 salute 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 thank you for being here and taking care of business uh and we're gonna take a break from this map for the next little while because we did the micro we did as much of the macro as we could uh, we discussed it we saw what people thought the different things 
And we're going to come back to this map as soon as things shift a little bit. And they're about to shift, hopefully for the better, hopefully not for the worse. But I fear it's going to go for the worse. Uh, so most likely we'll come back to this map, hopefully in a few months instead of a few weeks. I don't want things to shift that fast. Um, but we'll see. And we're going to start doing some of the other live streams more uh, that we've been doing, such as uh, it's springtime. I'm going to go get some cigars. We're going to go sit in the patio. Have a few drinks, liqueurs, comic books, uh, cooking, uh, if we can manage the time. Uh, we'll do uh, current events. We're going to do more mathematics and whatnot. Uh, I hope this is giving you a good picture of what's going on in the world, where we're headed. Hopefully not where we're headed. We've had people that have disagreed with us, people who have supported us. We've had different mindsets presented. I hope you do your own research and decide for yourself. Uh, where this is all going and where you want to be okay aside from that gang i hope you have a fantastic next few days i'm going to upload the math stream and segments of it and i'll break up this one too and upload some segments and we'll we'll do live streams uh this coming weekend as well and we'll try to keep that going um and i hope you have a fantastic fantastic next few days gang bye everyone <laughs>